Billy, it was the conclusion, the main conclusion, that they couldn't swallow. Why couldn't they swallow it? Well, why means why scientifically or why commercially? I mean, why commercially? Because this would uh, decrease the market of, of one of their best-selling drugs. Why scientifically? We could never really understand. There was deadlock. The welcome representatives continued to insist on deleting this sentence. Now, I must say we were a great deal more obstinate this time than we were over the letter. Because of our experience with the letter, uh, there was no certainty at all that had we compromised, the company would not have uh, reneged again after publication. The company rehearsed its criticisms again, uh, and then late on in the meeting um, uh, stated that they felt they couldn't, couldn't endorse the report. Panorama wanted to ask why, but Dr. Thierry Nibu and Dr. Jane Yeo, the two welcome scientists at the meeting, have declined to be interviewed. What we learnt, I suppose, was, and we shouldn't have been surprised, is that when the wrong result is produced for a famous and flourishing company on which a great deal of uh, financial expectation rests, uh, the company representatives are going to be under a great deal of pressure and that the interpretation of those results is going to be uh, stressed. There's going to be um, an attempt perhaps to, to blunt the message, to modify, to make a more mellow uh, conclusion from results which seem to be inescapable in their, in their implications. Late last year, the full five-year results of the Concord study were announced at the AIDS conference in Copenhagen. If you wish, so I... I the same team have now made an independent analysis, codenamed OPAL, of the company trials of early AZT and combined the results with Concord to give greater statistical power. If we put this together, and this was the purpose of undertaking this joint follow-up, of the trials, you can see that there is actually no difference between the two policies in terms of survival. Worse, in the combined survival results after more than five years, there are still more deaths among patients taking AZT early. The difference is still not statistically significant, but the numbers are 411 who took AZT early, 387 in the group who waited until they began to develop AIDS. Worse still, in the only fully independent data, the five-year Concord result taken alone, the difference now is statistically significant. 240 deaths in the early AZT patients against 199 deaths. Can you be certain that there is no long-term danger in taking AZT early? No, we certainly can't say that. It could easily be a long-term danger, which the trials aren't quite large enough to reliably detect, but that certainly is possible. But alongside this bad news about AZT, there was the good news reported late last year. In a separate trial, also run by the Medical Research Council and codenamed Delta, there were better results if AZT was taken in combination with other drugs. And about this, the company, now merged with Glaxo, was prepared to tape an interview. What it showed was that you could improve by about 25 to 30 percent, uh, in other words, delay both the onset of AIDS and also show prolongation of life in, in patients with HIV. And that was very exciting because uh, it was a real ray of hope. And with this second ray of hope in a decade, the company again advises HIV patients to start treatment as early as possible. James Quinlan had no symptoms of AIDS when he joined the Delta trial in the summer of 1992. Encouraged by the study's results, he's now experimenting with more extensive cocktails of drugs. The AZT, the 3TC are the antivirals, and the DDI, and I take hydroxia, which is an anti-cancer drug, and the encyclovir specifically fights herpes. The septrin is uh, anti-PCP for pneumonia. 
they offered me a position on the on the trial. It was a sort of a white mouse syndrome, and uh, I felt quite happy to to be the white mouse. I believed on the basis of you know you take the paracetamol the moment you think you're going to get a headache, rather than you know when you've got a blinding headache and leave it. Um, so I, I was I was more convinced on the basis of I'd, I'd quite happily take it earlier, even though I didn't have any symptoms. The Delta result shows patients like James that a cocktail of drugs is better than AZT alone. But Delta was not designed to answer the vital question of when to start taking a cocktail. If patients again have their hopes raised of extra benefit from starting treatment early, then it's possible that their hopes may again be dashed by later research. Is there a danger of going round that whole cycle again? Um, the simple answer to that question is yes, there's always a potential danger, but the answer is at the moment we don't know. The data that we have with combination therapy suggests that they have significant benefits over what was available uh, previously. So, uh, i.e. better than no treatment or AZT monotherapy. But if we don't know, why is the company saying start early? Well, it's the, it's the typical dilemma that faces physicians um, who are treating AIDS patients. And it really is an ethical dilemma because it would be very hard not to treat a patient uh, with a combination therapy when you see, for instance, the results of the Delta study. We do not know when to start combination treatment. And so exactly the same issues which we had back in 1987 are with us today. We don't know whether it's worthwhile taking combinations early when you're still well or whether in fact you can afford to wait until you're ill. We added the hydroxyurea last time. Has that made any difference? Um, not noticeably, no. Haven't Patients and their doctors can only learn when to start treatment with an AZT cocktail from another long-term study like Concord. But now it may prove harder for researchers to display their independence from the pharmaceutical industry. There's a squeeze on budgets, and medical research is now the responsibility of the Department of Trade and Industry. In future, more projects will be jointly financed and therefore controlled by drug companies, which can only increase the risk that commercial pressures will compromise scientific inquiry.